I now want to move on to the positive side of things, namely the role of positive affect in social neuroeconomics, um, particularly in interactive experiments. So let's revisit a number of studies we talked about last week. They include uh, the study by Rilling et al. using the prisoner's dilemma game and identifying two regions that are part of the what we know the valuation system, uh, namely stratum and OFC, that show larger response during mutual cooperation trials um, and a decreased response during trials in which participants actually gain the most amount of money. So there seems to be a social bonus here encoded in these regions that lead to the largest um, activations here. Similarly, we've seen that in the domain of punishment, we see activations uh, in the striatum, so here in the ventral striatum and here in the nucleus accumbens. Uh, and this is when um, we are able to communicate uh, basically that we've been mistreated in a sense um, to our interaction partners. And you see that in the increased punishment um, related responses in these regions. Now this can be interpreted as a form of social reward when we actually get to express our, um, our anger against others. However, we're still in the domain of reverse inferences here. And similarly, we've seen in a, in a whole other domain, namely uh, charitable giving, that um, transfers to charity are also processed within this domain and actually correlate with the amount that's transferred, just like transfers that are given to the subject. Uh, so just receiving monetary outcomes by the subject, and that's overlapping here in the ventral striatum again. So there's many domains within the social, well, ma many different tasks within the, within the social domain that activate the uh, reward areas. Um, and so the inference here could be, well, it, there seems to be aspects about uh, social interactions that are rewarding. For instance, when mutual cooperation takes place, or when we get to uh, punish people that have mistreated us. Um, and we can kind of see this, so it's very intuitive. So the results are basically con consistent with this notion that these activations in the reward center uh, or in, in the valuation network uh, are indicative of the rewarding nature of cooperation, punishments uh, of the factors and charitable giving, and many other examples that exist now in the literature. But this is uh, still a reverse inference. So if we want to make this conclusion, then the evidence for this requires an explicit measure of emotions. And relating this explicit measure of emotions to the um, neural circuitry. So it's important to show that emotions drive this behavior uh, above and beyond other factors such as monetary outcomes. Just as a reminder, there is some evidence already in the literature that indicates that emotions seem to play a, a role in this. Um, and here we have the positive emotions felt during the mutual cooperation outcome in the prisoner's dilemma game of a Rilling paper from 2008. And you can see that people feel happy in those situations. They feel social emotions like camaraderie and trust, and they feel relief because the outcome could have been a worse one. Uh, we've also already talked about this Tabibnia paper here, and they really did go to the extent of, of uh, taking self-report ratings about different outcomes in the uh, ultimatum game. And they took self-reports about happiness, so how happy do you feel about the outcome, and contempt in response to fair or unfair offers. And the results clearly showed that there's greater happiness for fair offers, and this is independent of how much money participants were getting on a, on a given trial, because this was controlled for. If you don't remember, check the previous video on this, because I, I outlined the uh, task in that. So they basically orthogonalized fairness to uh, monetary stake size or amounts offered on a given trial. Um, but also greater contempt for unfair offers was expressed by participants here. And again, this was independent of the what would the authors called material utility, but it could also be called the stake size. So it didn't matter how much money you got. If it was an unfair offer, you, you felt contempt. If it was a fair offer, you were happy, happy about the offer. And this makes a lot of sense, right? I'm summarizing the results here. Um, they're mostly regression analyses, so they're still just correlational. But what we can see, even if we control for um, the monetary stake size, right? So this is typically what we see in, in VMPFC and ventral striatum, uh, so that, that the um, activity in these regions directly tracks or trace, uh, follows subjective value. Um, and we can see the same thing here in the social domain, 
but uh, independent of the monetary amount that was uh, received by the participants on a given trial, we see that fairness seems to drive activity in the ventral striatum in the context of this ultimatum game, uh, but also in the VMPFC, as you can see here. So there's some evidence that, that fairness seems to be socially rewarding here. Again, I'm in the domain of reverse inference um, because fairness drives the neural responses in this area. It could also be a, a correlate of subjective value because fairness here will be driving subjective value, right? Um, just taking the um, into the utility equation, uh, taking into account that the behavior of the other player is fair versus unfair towards us. And this might be then, in this context, independent of the amount of money that we're receiving. Now we can extend this uh, to the domain of positive affect in social uh, neuroscience. So we can talk about social acceptance here. And we already know one of these studies that have done this, so that have done a social acceptance task, if you will, or a social reward task, as it was called here, um, in which participants recorded a video of themselves and uh, indicated, uh, explaining briefly who they are, introducing themselves, and also filled out a questionnaire about their personality. And then they were rated by a number of other subjects um, after the scanner and then came back for a second scanning session in which they received feedback about, about their video and about their personality. So it's highly personalized uh, feedback that the, that the subjects here received. And there was a high social reward and a low social reward condition. And you can see that the striatum also tracks feedback about the self. So this is this condition here. Feedback about your own person is processed if it's positive in the, in the reward system. So a number of follow-up studies were done to this initial Izuma study showing the correlates of social rewards. And this is one of these types of studies within the field of, uh, well, let's call it social neuroscience. Um, and in this study, they, they basically used a very similar approach. Participants came into the lab for first session in which they recorded a number of videos of themselves describing, well, positive and negative events from their lives. So two examples here are getting into UCLA, which is obviously a positive event, and the end of a friendship, which is somewhat of a negative event. And then um, a number of these videos were picked uh, to be rated by students and then shown again to the participants in a second session um, in which they received feedback from other students about how much they understood or didn't understand uh, the event that they were describing in their video. So it's a very personalized feedback about relatively personal and emotional stories from uh, the lives of the participants in this experiment. So what this, this is how this looked like in the scanner. So they saw their own video again, just to remind them that is what they said. And then they received, uh, received feedback from student one here. And in this case, it's the understood block. They found out that un uh, the other student understood why they were feeling this way. Uh, the student also said, I would have reacted the same way. And I see why that was a big deal. And then finally, participants rated how understood they felt. And the not understood block, this looked a little bit different. Uh, so here the end of a friendship is explained or described. And student two here says, well, I really had trouble connecting with your story. I don't understand why you were feeling that way. And I'm not sure why that affected you so much. And then the question again, how understood you feel? And obviously this should be a lower rating than this rating here. Um, and so they looked at the neural correlates of, of this period here, right? Because the videos are basically of the participants themselves. And what do they find in the understood blog? Well, they, she, they see increased activation in the ventral striatum, uh, so right here and in the mid insula and some other regions in the brain, um, when people felt understood relative to when they didn't feel understood. Um, so this is additional evidence that the ventral striatum is involved in these social types of rewards because obviously feeling understood um, may have a rewarding component to it. And it feels good to, to have someone that you can talk to that then empathizes with you. Finally, in this study about being liked by peers, uh, which basically invested first impressions, uh, the participants were asked to again come into the lab for an initial session uh, in which they saw a number of pictures from students that were supposedly from different universities. So this was framed as a multi-university study. And the task was to predict whether another participant, the one that's shown in the picture, is going to like you 
the subject in this in this study, right? Um, and so it was about sort of predicting whether you the the impressions of the person shown in the picture uh, of you is going to be a positive one or a negative one, also based on a picture that they are shown at their university, let's say. So then in the scanner, they would see this timeline here. They would see the queue. Um, this is the participant that's making the social judgment. Um, then this is a reminder of the judgment that the participant in the scanner uh, made initially. And finally, they find the feedback. They find out whether the person in the picture liked them back or not. So it hits home a little bit more closely or in the same sense that the previous study um, basically did. Uh, it's a very personal feedback about whether you would be liked or disliked by another person simply based on the appearance, uh, on, your, on your appearance in a picture. And this kind of uh, personal social feedback again leads to activation in the ventral striatum. This is now region of interest based analysis that the authors used here. Um, and what you can see is that um, anticipation after like is increased. So this is we're, we're talking about this period here. So when when you said that you liked the person in the picture as a participant in the study, then you would show increased activation after you'd said that you like this person relative to when you said that you didn't like this person because you care about how this person might feel about you. Uh, and that's exactly what this what this period is showing here. Um, there's a bit of a distinction between um, two groups that were then, um, so participants were split into two groups based on their rejection sensitivity as assessed via a standard questionnaire called the Rejection Sensitivity Questionnaire or, or RSQ. People with high rejection sensitivity um, would show lower, acti uh, higher activation in the ventral striatum and the larger uh, difference between anticipation after like relative to anticipation after dislike. People with lower uh, rejection sensitivity still showed this, but to a lower extent and not significantly so. And the same effect was obtained in the uh, dorsomedial prefrontal cortex. So it's part of the social cognition system that we had discussed. So this basically now across a number of studies implicates the ventral striatum, not only in cooperation and social reward, such as uh, demonstrated here in this picture and in the many studies we had discussed this week and last week, but also in the um, domain of social acceptance. So we see ventral striatum here. And obviously these are two very similar things. Um, being able to establish cooperation in a game um, such as the uh, Prisoner's Dilemma game or the Ultimatum game uh, involves this sort of level, maybe a lower level of social acceptance than this highly personalized feedback from, from these studies and shows social neuroscience uh, do. But it's still an element that I think is very important and it's an element that gives a sort of uh, social cooperation or social acceptance bonus to any monetary outcomes that you might receive in the context of these types of games. So it makes a lot of sense that um, that the reward system, the ventral striatum, but also VMPFC and other types of regions that are related um, are activated both, both uh, during cooperation uh, or during other types of socially rewarding uh, events or uh, trials within the context of um, economic games, and that these same regions uh, also activate in the context of social acceptance, so personalized feedback about you as a person.